No Igbo person will wake up one day and start looking for a Yoruba person to, to respect. If the seaport in Lagos is shot today, barrister, you will have your Lagos to yourself. And all the struggle is about the bread Doc, doc talks about. That bread, that ocean, that access, that control. The question I'm asking you is, what is the evil man doing in your Lagos when he has a sea? Yeah, what is yeah, the evil man? Know, let me... Let me ask I'm them. Done. Let me ask that. I'm happy you say all these things. You see, this is very good because you answered your own question. And uh, this is what we'll be talking about decentralizing Nigeria. Lagos itself is breathing under the heavy yoke of that port. You <laughs> see what happened in Apapa? The gridlock. Who do you think would be bears the brunt of the federal government has neglected Lagos? They don't plow back the money. The money goes elsewhere in the country. It's Lagos government that pays that clear the mess after everybody. It is the interest of Lagosians, of Yoruba people, that there are ports in Calabar. There is port in Worry. I know international ship has been betting in Worry and Port Harcourt. Let them take the ship there now. Lagos doesn't like the kind of problem that the port has brought. Do you know like how many people enter Lagos every day and what that government has to deal with? As we are talking, maybe about one, two thousand people are planning to come to Lagos. Where people with a dead dead, wherever they are living, they are coming to Lagos. We don't want that because development is not evenly spread. So that's what brings us back to the issue of decentralizing. Do you think the South-South... Wait, 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 Marcel. You have been muted, but I want you to listen to me. Yeah, Do you yeah. think that the South South and South East would not be able to develop their own port if they have their autonomy? Did you know it was Sinubu that created Levy Freeton? He got federal government approval because in that waterways belong to federal government to create free port zone. Lagos is building his own port. Apart from Tinkan, as we talk, he's building his own airport in the same area. Why are they not doing that in the east and south south? You are saying your Lagos, your Lagos. What are your governors doing when the Lake Free Sports Center is being built? When uh, that airport is being built, you know they can come together, get a fiat of federal government, and develop the ports because Lagos doesn't like the body. The body in Lagos, Lagos, is, like you said, Lagos is not a good place to live. Even the pollution alone, the whole of that Lake Axis in fifteen years, it will probably sink. Because we don't have the money to do what is required. Between 15 to 20 years, the way that thing is going in Lekki and all those axes, because it's already below the water I see level, anything can happen there. So Lagos is not even conducive for human. Not Lagosians, not you, not me is happy with it. That is why we need a centralized region, a decentralized power. Let the region concentrate. Let them have the power to build their own port, to create their own power. That's what we are saying here. We cannot be waiting on Abuja to come and do everything for us. Federal government have no business in talking about educational policy. That should be in the realm of local government. Our, our federal government will be supervising how people are admitted into secondary school. They call it unity school. What bullshit is that? So it's not just the port. We don't need this thing. Lagosians don't want it. We, they want people to go. So the sea, do you know what the sea will be if those containers are not coming there? It's not going to be a village. It's going to be developed to a tourist center. When you are growing up, you walk like two miles to get to that sea. Beautiful white sands. Um, the whole of coast of Ondo, Ondo State has the largest coast in Nigeria. Beautiful beach right there. Nobody's talking about it. We are the second largest deposit of bitumen in Nigeria. Are they touching it? Do you think it's only affecting Igbo? No. The only the gold in my hometown of Elisha now, um, in Chinese, they all go to Abuja, they will collect license, they will come there. The old place is being degraded as we speak with mining of gold because they don't care. They just want to carry their own gold and go away. So that thing you are talking about does not have, that is why we are talking decentralize it. See, let each and every one of us control our resources so you don't have to blame me. That is because we have not been a center. That's why they are cheating us. Go and do your own. Let's see who is better. That is simple what we are saying. All right, uh, Franklin. 
well, I, I let the people ask questions because I have exhausted okay. what I, there was no question that was directed to okay. me. All right, all I've right. already answered that. So let the people right. ask. ask um, the all right, so we're, we're think, okay. Maybe you can in, maybe you can in. No, no, okay. Should I ask questions? The prison, yeah. prison. Yeah. I, I should go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, um, from from every indication, uh, I have listened from the beginning when this program started. It is clear that uh, the barrister Ayo and she that made their stand clear that they want to opt out of Nigeria. That being said, I want to ask Mr. Fox, looking at leadership, these are the, the situation Nigeria is right now. Do you think that a quality leadership could change because you said something about the structure would a quality leadership run about a structure that will bring a new Nigeria if that is the route you want to go? Or should a quality leadership bring about a structure that would devolve Nigeria into what it was in the city? Would that work out so that all this background and all this Phobia about other ethnicities should, you know, go away. Thank you so much. Okay, should I should I take a go at that? Yeah, go go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, my brother. If you understand I the psychology, of war, I'm not going to participate again. I've been saying I wanted to say something for the last twenty minutes or twenty five minutes. Okay. Sorry, you not even allowed ahead. me. Oh, you yeah, have it. Can go ahead. I'll take a back seat for you. Go ahead, my brother. Sorry. Remy, Remy, you are in two places. You are here. You are here. So we didn't hear you. Uh, sorry about that. I have no idea about that, too. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Remy. Hey, chief, the only chief we have here. How can we do that? <laughs> go ahead, Remy. <laughs> you are muted now. It's not, it's not us that did this now. You are muted. We can't hear you, Remy. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. You muted yourself again. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. There are issues I, I, I want to talk before answering that question. You see, the calibration of Nigeria into 36 states is a very, very bad decision. If we are going to have the division of Nigeria so that we can have either confederacy or federalism. We have to go through plebiscite. We have to do referendum because maybe there are some people who want to go with uh, 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 the Fulani in Sokoto or the houses in Katsina. You should allow them to decide that. We should not allow people to decide for others. Whether you are a big ethnic nationality or um, uh, average uh, intentionality, we should not decide for anybody. We should allow people because the constitution, uh, the, cons the constitution says we the people. It's a lie. A lot of you know that it is a lie. So if the constitution says we the people and the people never contributed. This is just a constitution from the pocket of Abdul Salam. So why are we having problem with it? Because we did not contribute to it. Our feelings were not reflected in that constitution. That's why we're having a problem. So what Mr. Muhammad was saying, if the people in Bauchi wants to go with a notice or go to the Northwest or North Center, they should allow the people in Bauchi to determine that through their own referendum. One of the problems we had, the Kwara people had a referendum that they wanted to go with the Southwest. Tafaba Newa, and uh, President uh, Azikwe frustrated it. So if we really want peace and progress, we should allow people to be uh, the determinants of their own destiny. They should be the captain of their own souls. That is one. Number two, I you have addressed that issue. It's, it's not compulsory that we, we should use Lagos Port alone. We should diverse. 
I mean, if we are still going to be in the same country, we should diverse in true federalism. For instance, let me give you an example. When President Clinton was the governor of Arkansas, Jimmy Carter was the president of the United States. They were both from Democratic Party or Democratic or Democrat or Democratic Party. And they had disagreements. Jimmy Carter was going to deploy the U.S. Army. Then B. Clinton deployed his own National Guard too to counter them. That's the same country. The same people from the same party having serious disagreements. That is federalism. So that's the kind of thing we should champion. People should be able to have what they need at their local level. Like I said, what is the business of the federal government determining the high school my son will go? What is the business determining which university my, 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 my daughter will go? It is all nonsense. So we need to decentralize. Like the gentleman was saying, that if they leave Lagos, Lagos, it is not true. Because if everybody go back to their place, then Lagos is able to breathe. It will even become more prosperous. Now Lagos is choking. It's killing everybody. So let everybody go back to their base and build their base. But the only way we can do that is decentralization. We have to get real. We can't continue to, de to deceive ourselves. Somebody said that some of the behaviors of the leaders, we find it on the, on the followers. Yes, because the followers are frustrated. All the, uh, I don't want to call it a revolution because to me that is not the true definition of revolution. All the, the things that obedience are saying, uh, the movement they are having, is a reaction to, you know, to all this kind of corruption in a way. They just going about it the wrong way. But the bottom line is that for us to be able to make any progress, we have to be honest and deal with the real issues. Lagos is choking already. So if you have pots in Wari, in Akwaibo, and people can spread out, it's not going to be better just for Lagos. It's going to be better for everybody involved. And if we decide like, like Ayo was pointing out, we build a port in the east. We have it in Kaduna or whatever. We can go to Baranja and River Benue. We are going to be better for it. Like I was pointing out, we build a port in the east. We have it in Kaduna or whatever. We can go to So that is my contribution. And that is my answer to that question. Sorry. Thank you so much, uh, Chief uh, Remy. Let's, let's go to Franklin to respond. Uh, and then, yeah. Or, or um, you, don't have, you don't have any. I can go to Kenny and um, Ife. No, I... I was Rudolph, talking. I was here before Kenny and Ife. I, I thought no. I was talking before, I go, uh, before Chief Remy came in to say that he didn't. And I said, you let me yield so to him. Queue. So that after that, I could answer the question uh, posed to me by the priest, the guy that was driving. Okay, okay. I, I, I wonder if you want, but I'll be very quick about it. Okay. Well, it's very simple. He asked me uh, that I have been happy on quality leadership as the solution to our problem. You don't need to believe me. Read Achebe, read anybody who has ever given a serious thought to the Nigerian problem or to problem of development anyway. Even the people asking why countries fail or why nations fail. You can never underrate the impact of leadership on the evolution of human societies, you know? And then he said, uh, the, if, is that going to bring a solution to all the bickerings among the tribes? Yes, it will. Because quality leadership will make sure that the society is ruled, is governed by the rule of law. And that's when we find justice. St. Augustine made a point when he said, what is a nation? What is a country? What is a people? What is a government without justice but a band of robbers? And that's what it is. So, and then if we look at the psychology of scarcity, that's why people people bicker when there is unfairness, when there is injustice, not only human beings. There are experiments that show that monkeys, if you give one monkey two pieces of uh, vine, um, uh, two pieces of, uh, what is it called? Uh, no, no, not banana, whatever, banana, you know, and then give one to another one instead of two. The other one will react violently. 
and we are mammals and we are primates. We share almost the same genetic makeup with monkeys and they know what injustice is all about and they react violently to that. What about human beings? So you see societies where people bicker a lot is where resources are very scarce, opportunities are scarce, there is no accessibility, there's no level playing field. But people become relaxed in a society where they know that the playing field is level. If you read John Rawls, when he's talking about who's justice and who's rational, you will come to see he's talking about level playing field for everybody. That's what Nigerians want. Nigerians don't want a government that will stop them with money. No, give everybody equal opportunities. That's what Nigerians need. So, and this is what justice is all about. Giving to each what his due is. What is your due may not be what my due is. The people in Lagos, their due is that is their ancestral land. We could give them difference for that. That's justice and fairness. Okay, so this is what leadership does. It provides the vision. It holds the society. It holds itself to account and holds people that it gives jobs to account and then makes sure that the law carries sanctions and has teeth. So this is what leadership does. And a society that governs itself by the rule of law creates an equal playing field for everybody and bickerings will go. Because if I know that if I steal, I will get punished. Likewise, the Yoruba man that steals will get punished. We will not be quarreling. If I know that if I insult somebody because he's a Yoruba man, that I'm, I will go to jail for that. We will not be quarreling. But it's because nothing happens. There is a reign of impunity. Nigeria is the impunity republic. That's why we are bickering and quarreling and fighting over rent and, uh, you know, things that are not even, we are not supposed to fight over. This is where leadership is pretty important. That's why I believe and I share Achebe's views that the trouble with Nigeria is simply and squarely the failure of leadership. If we don't get leadership correct, we will never get any other thing. It's the leadership that will look at Nigeria and say, hey, this country is too big. Let us I, a little bit decentralize it. Only leadership can do that. Nothing else. All right. Thank uh, you. Uh, thank you. Well, we can't discount uh, leadership. No, I mean, of course. But what we are saying is that no matter who the leader is, if you don't have a system to work with, you fail. I don't care who you are. What leaders are saying, leadership creates systems. Uh, one man doesn't system. create. Okay, exactly. But you have to understand what kind of system will work. You can create. You see, we have different leadership that work for different people. Running I agree. for Ghana. Uh, Gobachev worked for uh, Lee Kuya worked for Singapore and they di it's different models. I agree. What do we need in Nigeria? What kind of leader do we need? That's what we should That's be discussing. A leadership that has vision mm -hmm. and understands what Nigeria needs yeah. and is ready and has the courage to work for that. Exactly. Now, what does Nigeria need? You see, wh what you have expressed, I'm sorry. Uh, Good leadership. What you have expressed is wishes. You are talking of the ideal. If wishes were us, his beggars will ride. You are talking of the ideal. You are not being realistic. Oh, we should do this. Human being, this is what Nigeria needs. How do you get there? Now, we are trying to identify the fundamental issue. The fundamental issue that we can identify Nigeria is its composition. It is inherently defective. So... How? What should a good leader do in Nigeria? How? If How is Nigeria okay, in so, sorry, can I come in if this is a conversation? Uh, if if it is a conversation, no, then no, I'd no, like to come no, in. No, 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 no. Is it one man, please, join the queue. Is, is please, join the queue. So how is it fundamentally defective, the composition okay. of Nigeria? Because I've said it over and over again in the course of this uh, debate. Because we have 36 useless states that go to Abuja every month to collect Alawi. No government ever function like that, ever. None. No, that's not, that's, 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 no, no but that's not composition. That's not composition. No, give me one country like Nigeria, one country that is run Nigeria that is successful. Well, I no, I can't give you that example because you, you are you, you know you are making a okay, case. Okay, let's for do question and answer. So no, no, you are you are making a case for composition. Composition is the people that make up Nigeria. You see, there you is nothing. To, there I, is we will not, never we will never get anywhere if we address it like this. Let's do it. One no, by one. Question and answer. We, we, then give we define our words and terms. Give me and then one understand with what we mean by the wait, words wait, and terms. Wait, frankly, no. Give me one okay. country with good leader that is functional, that is calibrated like Nigeria. That is the leader that makes it so beautiful. Give me one. 
No country, no country is no country, yeah. No country yeah, like no Nigeria will ever work. You see, for a leader no to work, country. you must have a system to work with. No, no, no. You, you, you ask me a question, and then you superimpose it upon it. Words yeah, but you said no. Apply. You said no country. No, I said no two countries are the same. No two countries are the same. Yeah, we are talking about so system. Each country, each each country has its own autonomous reality, and its leadership of that country addresses we that. We are discussing in abstract. We are talking about. Yeah, because I'm, because, because because that's what federalism. Okay, the federation. Um, those me... are not. Those are not. It's, it has been employed. You see, these are analogies that have been formulated over centuries that have been adopted by countries. We have fed re federalism in America. We have re federalism in Canada. We have in Switzerland. We have all over the world, and they are functional. Nigeria I calls itself a federalist state, and it doesn't have federalism. So. Else, the state will now go to Abuja every month. Where is our Alawi? It's, it's, it's an abnormal. It's an aberration. It's never going to work. It has never worked anywhere. I don't care who you bring. Wake up, Mother Teresa, and pair it with uh, Agnes Mandela to come out. That's Nigeria. not even my bone of contention with you. My bone of contention system. with you is about composition. Yeah, composition it, means the constituent, the, the people that make up the country. There is nothing defective about Nigerians and the way we are made. Not up. Nigerians. Yeah, no, yeah. So, but no, no, what, no, no. What you're arguing again? What you're arguing for is the fact that we ourselves we allow the military create these states for us. It's not the composition of Nigeria. It has the been composition created. Are the people so let's that make up solution. Nigeria the way it is. What would you have done? These are the structures that we are operating at the moment. That is dysfunctional. Everybody agrees with that. But we can change that. This is what good leadership, once it gets to power, will say. This structure is unwieldy. We cannot afford so it. It's you agree that it, the or it's not working, or it's dysfunctional, or it doesn't feed us. Okay. So we can sit down and change it. A exactly. good leader can say, let's okay. dialogue. Let's have a dialogue it's, of it's nationality. It's no, we are going be back to what you've been saying. Let's have areas of disagreement. No, let's talk about what we have agreed about. You know, you have to what we are saying. Franklin. What you just said is the kingdom. You have just said Franklin. that this culture is bad. You have okay. agreed with us. You have just no, said no, no, no. I didn't agree with you. I said you only good leadership us. could put that in motion. Good leadership Franklin. can come in and say, look at this country. I have looked at it. The way it is constituted, it cannot Franklin. work. So let us do, do something do? to that effect. Only do good do? leadership could say, hey, Nigeria is either this situation or this uh, structure we are operating. But we first identify that we the structure cannot afford it. Is so let us do something to change it. If you That's have a leader why, who doesn't what? believe in that restructuring, the leader will fail. It doesn't well, the personal not, goodness you, of anybody. You, you, you're now discussing an abstract. If hypotheticals, yeah. And and I'm not talking hyper when I talk about good leadership. A leadership that rises to the responsibility of personal. Let's start with personal example, for instance. A leadership that is not corrupt. Because we are talking about structure. Of, we are not the even talking about system. how I'm much Nigeria has generated system. as a country. Over America the years, has to to power be our development is the system we are stolen <laughs> through corruption, through uh, the fact that leaders are not responsible. So we are not even talking about the massive funds that Nigeria has generated as a country that has not been used for the welfare of the people, but we are stolen and dumped in non-bank accounts in abroad. Franklin, if I can do it, so these are you are issues that arise in the course of such discussions, and we have to take the sense of them Franklin. before we can arrive at a solution that is that will fit our problem and solve it. If you the, the are... problem, the problem, I am sorry, the problem can never be solved unless we involve the subject matter. And who is subject matter? Me, you, we, the people. No matter so, any solution you bring, even if a leader comes with a revolution uh, with, uh, with, uh, who is visionary, if the vision is not bought into by the people, it will fail. It will fail. You have to remember every time that what we need to do is to get our people mobilized. Do you want Nigeria? Yes or no? If they say yes, how do you want it? Then the people will now vote for people who represent them to carve out a constitution for them. If we bring a visionary leader whose vision is not accepted by the people, it is going to fail and we're going to go back into crisis. No matter what you do, in Yoruba land, we say that Aki, Faori, Lenyo, Lori, you don't bat somebody's head behind him. 
Everything we are doing here, if we do not allow ourselves to consider, to give due consideration to the people on the street, their feelings, their desires, their dreams, their aspirations, we are just working in vain. No matter what to bring to the table. All so right. we always have to remember that. All right. And there are ways we can do this. Thank Referend. You. Thank you, Chief Remy. Thank you so much, uh, Franklin. Thank you, Ayo. We are going to um I, I want to know how long you guys have with uh with us. I've gotta go. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, I I I, uh, sorry, I came up. here because of Franklin. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, you are owing me money. You are owing me money. Yeah, because, because of you, yeah, I've not been able to see some of my No, no, hold on, hold on, guys. I, so they want to. I want to make Please. a decision. So the decision I'm making is that I want to say that we allow the people who are already here to to ask their questions. You know, nobody comes in anymore. Um. So and so be quick so that we can get to everybody and then round up. I can hear you, Anes. Yeah, thank you, Doctor Damages. I. <clears throat> I actually come here not to ask them any question because your guests today are really, really provoking my anger. But I'm not here to ask them questions. I act I'm actually here to make some comment and uh, um, maybe applaud uh, Dr. Franklin because I think he is the only one that stood out, you know, today. Um, uh, Mr. Ayo asked a question that uh, leader. He, he, no, he made a comment that leadership is a uh, is a product of the society. Yes, leadership is the product of society because Nigerians were not getting it right before, until now. Uh, Nigerians are waking up, they are trying to do the right thing. So I believe that they should be given that chance to choose the leader that they want to lead them. And this is in contrast with what uh, Mr. Um, Remy is saying. When he stated that, uh, that the Yorubas are fearful, they have this fear of domination. I don't know the Yoruba that you are speaking for because the good Yoruba that I know are not afraid of any human being. They are not afraid of anything. It is only, let me use this word, Dr. Um, uh, damages, please. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be very kind today. It is only the criminal among them or the criminals among them that are being fearful of domination because the true Yoruba people that I know are very accommodating. These same Yoruba people, when the Igbo people left their villages and come to Yoruba land and asked for land, the good Yoruba people sold their land to the Igbo people. It's the significance that we are accommodating people. But for anyone to come here and try to give bad name or bad image to Yoruba people is something that I really, really feel very sorry for that person. Some of us own properties in Lagos. You cannot come tomorrow and ask me to abandon my property and go to my uh, to go to my um, uh, place. I paid for it. I gave you money when I paid for that land. It's so pathetic that most of us are in foreign land today, own properties. What if, for for people in United States, for example, what if the American Indians ask you to leave and go back to your country? They are they are being fearful of you. They are being they they have this fear of domination. Go back to your land. According to Mr. Remy, go back to your land and develop your place. Chief, Mr. Remy, you should, you chief, should chief, show chief, us an chief, example. Chief, please, chief, do not, chief. I will not address my chief, please. You don't tell me how, what to say. It, I know chief when I see one. Respect, please, no, yeah, I, I, I know chief when I see one. Please, allow, you don't tell me how to address you, anybody. His name you. is Remy, and well, I'm please, very kind please. enough to call him Mr. Remy, showing allow, that he's, he's an elder, right? Please. Allow him to express it, to express please. himself. In our place, if we have taken enough from a king, we tend to put basket and put yeah, that, the king that's your in place, place. Though, not your Hold on, land. Hold on. please. Doctor Damages, it's your place. Mute this man, please. I'm not here for you. If I'm here for you, you will know. No, um, no. Be, be as you are in your place, but not in Yoruba land. That's please. I I'm really really trying to calm my nerves. Please don't provoke me. Please, no, no, you, 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 you are, you are, you are no, a no, hair trigger no, anyway, so no, let no, it please. be. Let's hear you. Please. please. Um, if, if everybody should be going back to their place to develop, we should start showing the example. Leave the United States that you are, go back to your Lagos state and develop it, or your, to your village and develop it. 
Now, um, what actually triggered me to call in was when uh, Mr. Franklin responded to Mr. Uh, Dr. Franklin responded to um, Ayo's uh, argument, uh, stating that uh, some Igbo people, or maybe he didn't mention Igbo, but that some people um, uh, said that uh, the Oba of Lagos should go to hell. That was one of them. And Dr. Franklin uh, responded by saying that those people should be arrested because they are causing a, they, that statement may cause her um, unrest in the society. But this is, I was one of them that asked uh, the Oba of Bini to go to hell. I even say that Oba of Bini is, is a, um, I was a nuisance. And the statement, there is a principle of uh, causation, cause and effect. You cannot threaten an entire ethnic group and think that you should be accorded any form of respect. In 2015, the Oba of Lagos, in his bid to please his paymasters, the APC at, um, uh, criminals, threatened the entire Igbo nation or Igbo community in Lagos State that they should that if they don't vote for APC, that they will be thrown into the lagoon. Did you not hear that? To understand that the very APC that he was speaking for disassociated itself from that statement. A lot of well-meaning Nigerians asked the Oba of, Bin, uh, Oba of Lagos to apologize to the Igbo people. Till today, he has not done that. So the likes of me will always see Oba of Lagos as a nuisance and he should go to hell until he apologized to the Igbo people for making that threatening statement. So that is aside. Recently, um, the, no, 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 let me just, you could be, just give me one more time, please. Let, let's address this thing because it's, it's really, really getting annoyed. At the age of 40, 45, 50, 60, if you are not speaking for the truth, if you are not calling for peace, then something is definitely wrong with you. Check yourself. Now, this is it. Every political season will start seeing Igbos being threatened in Lagos State. Only Lagos State. Only Lagos State, and you've not sat, sit down to ask yourself some questions? Only Lagos State. And who is the architect to this problem? Tinubu. Tinubu is the problem. Recruiting is arboros to attack and kill Igbo people. Every political season or, 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 or campaign season. After this election now, everywhere will be calmed. Then we are all loving, peaceful people. But once it is election period, the, the, the likes of Igbo, Igbo people are in danger. Just during this election now, presidential election, we saw a lot of them threatening Igbos. Even the police, we are patting, you know, patting them. And I wonder, are we actually part of this country? If you are calling for cessation, this is not the way you call for cessation. This is pure wickedness against the Igbos. Recently, the spare market being maybe literally owned by the Igbo people was set ablaze. Over 200 shops destroyed. A life was killed. Many were injured. And the likes of Mr. Ayo and Mr. Remy did not condemn that. Maybe they did elsewhere, but I didn't see them condemn that here today. And you are saying that we have no right to choose who we want to lead us. We reside in Lagos. We own properties in Lagos. And in, by virtue of that, we have every right to elect who we want to lead us. Don't we have such right? All these things that you guys are beating about, trying to you know, uh, play some uh, smart game, is not going anywhere. We are not leaving Lagos State. Because in Onisha, in Igbo land, we have a lot of we have a lot of we have a lot of Yoruba people. We have a lot of Yoruba people in Igbo land. We've never threatened them to leave. We've never threatened them to leave. In Enugu State, in Enugu State, soldiers are lost street. Please, please move this man. Please, soldiers are lost street. He's owned by a Yoruba man. He owned a lot of houses on that street. No Igbo person has ever threatened them to leave Igbo land. Okay. Can Why must you? it be us all the time? Can I thank you? Tinibu's wife is from Ishekiri. Um, let me let me respond. Can I thank you? I think, I think you are very, very disrespectful. And you are a very pure hypocrite. And Always I would let you know, number one, for you, referring to me as Mr. Oyeyemi, is very, very disrespectful. I'm a chief. And that chief tenancy title, I didn't buy it with money. My efforts were recognized 
and they gave me that chief taxi title. It is part of this uh, putrid and insulting, disrespectful behaviors that are annoying us. If you have properties in Lagos, don't you meet people there? Don't they have a culture? If you are cultureless, where you come from, must you bring your cultureless attitude to Nigeria? I mean, to, to, to Lagos? What's wrong with you? You have no respect. You are, you, are, you are so hypocritical. Okay, before the king of Lagos, um, Akiolu said something. Oh, man, what, caused it? what caused it? You are the one who saw, who talked about concession. So he just came out from somewhere and said, okay, this is what I want for Igbos. What did the Igbos do? You are so hypocritical. If, if you analyze it very well, he was reacting. And you come here and start, you know, vomiting nonsense from your mouth. Come on, man. Anybody wants to respond to him can respond to him. Okay. Thank you, Chief uh, Remy. I okay. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Now, okay. Now, 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 it's my turn to say something. Okay. Now, listen. Okay. Hey, guys, we have to calm this rhetoric. We really have to calm this rhetoric. This rhetoric doesn't all go well for our for a peaceful coexistence across board. We may be thinking that uh, we are representing our individual anger the way it comports to us, but we may be doing a great disservice to mutual understanding going forward. Now, listen, you know, um, about the, what the Oba of Lagos said, that was in 2015. We all heard it, and then we made the appropriate condemnations. And then, can you demanding that uh, Ayo and uh, Chief Remy uh, disavow uh, or condemn whoever that was not a topic of today's uh, uh, discussion, it was a debate and so on. So, you, we cannot import what doesn't belong to uh, a situation and then impose it on them. It will be unfair to these two brothers of mine. But our rhetoric, we should be bridge builders. That's why we traveled out, that's why we are more educated than those on the streets fighting these battles. Uh, words are powerful. Words are so powerful that so many religions made word their gods. If you read the Christian Bible, John first, uh, John chapter 1 said in the beginning was the word. And at the end of the day, he said that the word was God. Because words, words are very powerful. We can use it to create. And we can use it to destroy. So if we don't watch our words, brothers, we, uh, we are going to be in serious trouble. And that's why I always analyze words and then point out rhetorics that are not so very wonderful. So everybody should calm the temper a little bit. We are debating. Debates, are, you know, if you watch the Oxford debate or Monk debates on, on online, you will see how beautiful they are. There are fireworks. But at the end of the day, it doesn't cross that threshold where we carry anger and annoyance and then insult each other going forward. It doesn't work. It should not work in a civilized society. And I believe we are all mature gentlemen and civilized men. So at the end of it, I would like us, old oh boy, if Remy says that he's a chief, that's the way he wants to be addressed. That's the way you should address him. Okay, like, Chief oh. Remy, I salute you, sir. Yeah, so that's the way it should go. And then uh, it's, uh, it's a but as an individual uh, respect. We respect people across board. Uh, and then uh, Remy, my brother, Chief Remy, you have to calm down. Okay, <laughs> so and then let us yeah, take the discussion yeah. very further I mean, down. The, the conversation was going on very well. We are all learning yeah. from each other. Nobody yeah, knows yeah. everything. And You're one right. thing I wanted to point out is this. Mm -hmm. All of us here, we have families. Do we agree with every member of our family? No, 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 no. Not at all. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we are not talking of a larger society. So what we need is understanding. Not yeah. come here to disrespect me because even if I'm older than you, I owe you respect. You're right. I owe you respect. So you don't just come here and just talk to me anyhow. I don't really appreciate that, but uh, that is so bad now. So let's move on. Right. Chief Remy, Rudolph, Chief Remy, you owe me. You, 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 you owe me a cake of palm wine. What's no, they're going to silence me because they don't like to hear what I have to say. Let's, 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 let's speak now.
No, we said everybody we speak. Everybody. Yeah, you've been trying to speak now for over two hours. Yeah, but yes, it, 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 it doesn't like to hear what I have to say. So I don't want to feel that uh, some people are being discriminated against. Uh, I'm, I'm not Bihafran. I'm from Oyala, yeah. yeah. so that color says. Let him talk. I beg, Rudolph. All right, one man. Ayo says. He oh, oh, all right. So, so thank you, Ayo, and uh, thank you, Rudolph, for having me. I only really came on really because of uh, Franklin, who uh, I'm hopeful to address, and I hope I have the space to address him. And um, <clears throat> I, I, I want to ask you a question, uh, Franklin, and I want you to address it. So I don't want to hear what Voltaire has to say. I don't want to wa hear what uh, Jorgen Haberman or uh, I'm asking you. You've already set the backdrop with all of the books you've used to line your backstage. So we know what, what you're projecting. So I'm asking you frontally, not Achebe, not Voltaire, not Confucius, you. So I'm painting you a scenario because really, what what's, let's, what's led us to this space is a guy called Chinedu uh, uh, Rose Vivo. And I only call him Chinedu Rose Vivo because that was on his campaign poster when he wanted to be senator just as early as 2019. Anybody can Google it. You'll see it's all, it's all over the internet. So uh, this conversation is it really, really comes into play because a guy called Chinedu Rose Vivo, who cannot speak a lick of the Yoruba language, uh, he's, he is aspiring uh, to be the governor of Lagos State. And, and, and that doesn't sit with the culture. It does not sit with the culture. Whether the right and wrongs of it, we are Yoruba people and we're of a particular way. And it does not sit with the culture. The Nigerian constitution, whatever, it does not sit with the culture. That a person that cannot speak an ounce, a lick of the Yoruba word, but fluent, by the way, in an Umbra dialect of Igbo, you know, uh, so it, it does not sit with the culture. So it does not sit with the culture. And, um, you, you know, all, all of this pushback now that Lagos is no man's land, it, it's a narrative that comes from your quarters, and we have heard it endlessly, and we have heard it enough. So I think people conflate the Yoruba mild mannered Omoluabi uh, way as a form of weakness and the biggest fool alive is the person that conflates the the yoruba mild-mannered ways because we are i don't know if you know why we call ourselves omoluabis that's a civilized person uh, the yoruba language is too nuanced to translate uh, directly into english but the sum total of the omoluabi philosophy that underpins the yoruba uh, the yoruba ideology is a civilized person so don't conflate that civilized manner as weakness and then come into our space. We accommodate you. We give you the fat of the land to live fat. And then you tell us that our land is no man's land. Lagos is Yoruba land. Though. It has an Oba who sits on the throne. You, you know, Lagos is Yoruba land. So th there has to be clarity on that. But uh, the question I really wanted to ask you, frankly, and like I said, I'm not asking Confucius or whoever, I'm asking you. So please don't philosophize and, and, and no straw man, you. Uh, so don't give me any straw man narrative. If uh, if uh, if an ego man called Muiwa or Kafo wants to be the co governor of your home state, wherever it is within that region, does not speak a word of ego, has uh, is all of his leadings and affiliations are too, uh, is a maternally, maternally Yoruba, paternally Igbo, uh, uh, Muiwa or Kafo, who wants to uh, be the governor of uh, whatever state in the East, knowing, as we all know, how insular and clannish that region is, will he even get the first step to buy a form? So that is to you, Franklin. My brother, I will I will really push back because the questions you you just bundle up a lot of uh, uh, over generalizations that are quite uh, you know un, untenable and then push them as a question. If you're asking me a question, you should have to come at me like an intelligent man because that question at the tail end of it it sounded less intelligent than I expected from you. Well, yeah, I address it never the last time. Hey, listen, you know, I gave yeah. you time to talk. Allow me to now address your question because it's 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 so very unnerving and annoying to address me this way. I am not I am not a guy that you will just, so you can address the people so very clannish and insular. You know how insulting that is? That's the most stupid thing I've heard Is that not the general Listen perception of the region? No, 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 no. Is that I'm, not how people say that region? I will choose, I will choose, allow me to talk. I will choose not to answer your question. 
I can do that. You don't call a people. I spent a whole part of four hours here trying to make people realize how dangerous it is when you use certain words. And then you stay, you sat there to call my people knowing how insular and clannish. What can be more stupid? What impudence? You still be want me to tell me that kind of rubbish and you want me to take it lying low with you. What kind of nonsense is that? Is it because that we sit down and talk like Nigerians? I've been the guy, I've been an apostle of peace. And then you dare address me this way. You don't, you dare not do that with me. I am too intelligent for that. And then you are telling me to abjure myself, not to philosophize. Did you pay my school fees? You ask me a question, you tell me how to answer it. What impudence. Nigerians, you guys have a lot of effrontery on you. You don't do that kind of nonsense. At this age and level, before the whole world, you are addressing a man like me in such a manner. I have been respectful with everybody here today. But you dare not do that before me or else I will wash you down because I know I can do that. I'm capable of doing that. <clears throat> well, well you got an person, yeah, you asked me a question and then you remain quiet and then stew in the misery and then let me take your question for what it is. You asked me a question. Because a guy is named Chile, do he could not speak it. What are the constitutional provisions for becoming a governor in Nigeria? Did you ask yourself that question? And then a man like you is peddling this pettiness, this clannishness in the 21st century. Other countries are advancing, but your thing is because it's our culture, he doesn't see because he doesn't speak Yoruba. But his father is Yoruba. So he's no more. Uh, do Yorubas inherit property from the maternal side? Is Yoruba land a matrilineal society? And then you are very proud to delegitimize a fellow human being because you say it's not our culture. Is it written anywhere in Nigerian's constitution, in Lagos constitution, that before you become a governor in Lagos, you must speak Yoruba? Is it a constitutional requirement? If it is not, why it is. are you? It is. Why is, is it? I stand to be corrected. It I is. don't know. If it is, yeah, no, let, let me correct you then. It is instituted in the Lagos State Statute books that Yoruba language is the second official language of that state, and it's the language of governance every Friday in the state parliament. Okay. So that is an understanding you don't have, okay, thank and you. more to it, probably Chinedu does not either. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Did the law say it is a requirement for becoming a governor of Lagos State? Thank you for that. Uh, I, asked, you know, I asked you a question. Did the law say, did this Lagos by law say is a constitutional requirement? For one to become a governor of Lagos, that this person must speak Yoruba. Did the well, I've already answered that. They, they call no, the parliament in Yoruba language, so it's implicit. You said that you, you made a point here that Yoruba language is too nuanced to be translated into English. Every language is too nuanced. And that's from my philosophical basis. Philosophy gave me that idea. Every language. That's why in Spanish, they say, tradi uh, trans uh, tradition, uh, es tradi uh, you know, that translators are traitors in every language because languages are nuanced. So there is nowhere, even Lagos state bylaws doesn't supersede the Nigerian constitution. So, and it's not a constitutional requirement that somebody must speak a native language to become a governor of a state until you guys uh, make that a law. I don't see anything constitutionally prohibiting this guy from vying for governorship. I am not saying that people should vote for him, but he has a right to be a governor. He has you, that you've right. You've not addressed my question, though. I, I invited you to reverse it to your homestead and see uh, and know, I know your people your as you know them. No, 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 I would, I'm, you know, I, I'm not afraid of questions. I deal with it every day of my life. I'm not afraid of it. So relax, my brother, and then listen to the answers. In my home state, if it happens, I don't care. What yeah. I care for is a man who is competent who has the capacity to give good governance to my people, wherever they are. That's what matters to me. Where he comes from, who his father is, doesn't, I don't give a hoot about that. It should not be playing a role in the 21st century of our considerations of who should govern us. Those who are my brothers that have governed my state, what have they achieved all this while? Those that are from my own neck of the woods that have governed Nigeria, where have that left us? Are we a first world nation? No, we are not. But we are still clinging to the same atavistic tendencies that left us where we are. Well, and then we are then proud of that. 
and then you will be so very proud of that stupidity that you will sit down here and call the people clannish and insular. Well, I've no, heard that's the generally well think... held perception. It's not news to you to hear them describe clannish. Am not I news saying something you've not heard before? You hold this Is it breaking right? news to you no, no, that no, no, people no, consider no, the South East clannish and insular? You know that as well as I do. That's the widely held belief. You are living in England says a lot about your personality and character more than anything else that an educated man like you holds such a perception i should go and return my school fees because it's, it's useless i am sorry to tell you that rudolph i'm out of this discussion all right um th thank you well, and there it is. Uh, 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 rudolph let's, yeah, let's, can i have a say because uh, you give people uh, enough time to speak uh, uh, you're not you're you're you are spoken now you know i spoke on your behalf you know me, I, I, I asked rudolph you know to let you speak yeah, he may have not been able to present what he wanted to present. I don't believe anybody is challenging uh, Gbadibo, you know, from legally, from being a governor that is not qualified to be governor in legal states, you know. Um, it is the narrative that is the problem. And uh, what I think is a major issue with most people that are against him in Lagos is the presentation. He has been presented as an Igbo candidate. That is the presentation. The first write-up that came out about him only celebrated his Igbo heritage. They said he is a proper somebody. I saw the short write-up. Proper Lagosian. I don't know. It's not a proper Lagosian. Of uh, by far of over two hundred years, uh, by uh, with Igbo mom and the wife married to Igbo in Kechi, and that's why I gave the example of uh, Fusho Doati. Who is also a Lagosian, married to Edo, Professor Alele Williams' daughter, whose mother is a Shakiri. He never put any of those on his resume or for anything. He just put plainly his resume. And people become apprehensive, especially with the tone that the presidential election has taken. So I can excuse people. I can see people's annoyance. Why people say oh, oh okay this is the agenda and then video upon video keep coming out we must take lagos we must do this we must do that so that is the appreciation and that remains in the realm of public opinion people will still vote whoever they want to vote it's not a legal issue you know people can go ahead i'm not going to take it against anybody for being apprehensive about him if we break down his oh his father is from lagos it has no meaning because okay. at the end of the day we all came from Somewhere, his father is not from Lagos. That's I put that on my Facebook. Can you just have uh, Mr. Ayo make clarification whether or not it was Vivo himself and his campaign that released that uh, resume, or was it some uh, a third party? Can you clarify? I, can you clarify I that? don't know, but that was the only he, thing being distributed across. Did, no, he and he didn't say anything did. about it. He, he did not, that, please, please. Uh, yeah, Dominic. He never disputed it, and he didn't put anything to the contrary out by himself. Everything uh, I've never he, seen anything about his campaign that told me to, what to, job he has ever had in his entire life. Who does he own to make life go to? Make I, I heard that he went to MIT. He's an architect. Okay, but I don't know what job he has ever had oh. or any project he has ever executed. So right, I so. take issue with that kind of narrative. I'm not voting even the ADC candidates that. Uh, as good resume, put everything there neatly because there are so many other dynamics. But I'm just saying about that particular candidate, why people are apprehensive is right. you presented yourself this way, and some uh, I people are also, also reinforcing that. Of you did not no, give me the time to last. You gave everybody else plenty enough time. No, no, no <laughs> I, um, one man, you had enough time. Dominic, um, hold on, okay? I want to get Ify to ask a question. We have to end in another. Um, at least let the guest leave, and then we can have a wider conversation if you guys want to. Wait, 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 wait. The reason why I projected was I wanted the IO to make proper clarification whether or not it was how Vivo presented himself, or if that's what third party used, because he keeps putting it out as how Vivo presents himself. That's why I wanted to make. make, make okay, have okay. Make let me ask you a question, Dominic. Do you have anything that Vivo himself put out? Do you have anything? 
I don't have anything. I don't even know who the man okay. is. I, I, I that is the only thing in the public face. Is the only thing I can attest to that I can talk about. And he never right. disputed right. it. That all is right. the only narrative being sold. That can you ask me to vote for person because his father is from so, Lagos? That is untrue. That is untrue. I'm only okay. I'm only person out that votes. I don't know. You are pushing a narrative, a very sensitive narrative. I'm only people not react to it. No. I'm only saying that I don't. I don't know. Discussion. It's like you are holding somebody out to the back, and you are telling them not to talk. All right. Then All right. Talk, then you hold on. against them. Hold, hold on, everybody. That won't be fair. That won't be fair. Let's. I want to say that I, I don't know this gentleman, and if I just if I if I'm listening him for the first time, if I'm hearing you um about this man for the first time, and I'm hearing it from you, the way you put it out is this is how this man represents himself. You not yes. you are not being specific about whether or not it was him that released. But you are not that able to tell me what he has Okay, let that's somebody who knows. Dominic. Okay. Let somebody who knows tell us. Let's go ahead. After we go and Google man. That, that's a straw man argument, by right, the way. Right. That's a, that's a straw man in logical fallacy. Badebo, Badebo has as um of cosmopolitan Lagos. I, I represent it. I embody it. I see what brings us together as opposed if, to what if takes you have us been in a campaign before. Not, see, Lagos State has has been. In, in harmony for a very long time. What happens is politicians come and try to divide us. And I always say to people, let us be wary of a politician or politicians that only remember that they are Yoruba when it's time for politics. When Fulani herdsmen were making incursions into Oyo and into different parts of the Southwest, and people like Sunday Igbo who stood up, people like Ruti Makredu who stood up, stood up, a lot of the politicians in Lagos were quiet. They played politics with it. They were quiet. When it was time for Amoteku, they were quiet. So many interests of the Yoruba people, they were quiet because they wanted an alliance with the North, right? So they put their political interests above the interests of their people. And then all of a sudden, it's time for politics, and they remind you that this person does not speak Yoruba. This person. With the Yoruba that they've been speaking, when they fired at young people at Leki Gate, did they separate the Yoruba, Igbo, or Hausa? Mm -hmm. All the Agberos on the streets that are wasting their lives, young men that are getting on drugs and have been multiplying for years, do they go and meet the ones that are Yoruba and tell them, come, we'll give you rehabilitation, or we're going to get you off the streets, we're going to ensure that you're a more productive member of society? Are you implying that the politicians fired other protesters in... Yeah, I will order. say, I will say, from what the army has said, Governor Sonwulu invited them in and give the order. But he's been clearing that time and again. I imagine you caught the interview. Uh, I, I mean, and then what the army said during the hearing completely goes against what he said. Yeah. And yes, yes, yeah, so of a state, right? If you do not give an order and somebody else comes and is shooting like a cow, you should be on the ground. As a leader of the state, you should say, you cannot shoot at my people. You have to shoot at me to get to me to get to the people. So you believe, uh, even though time and again the governor has said, well, I didn't give the order in, in different ways. You believe that he still gave the order and understanding how governance works, how the chain of command, not even with the police, with the military, you still believe? I don't, I don't believe that a military... Without carrying the governor along, it's not possible. So, except it was a order. I believe that. If you can, I also believe that he saw the bodies. I believe that he was at Reddington Hospital. I believe that he saw the bodies, and we have there's a lot of evidence on this. So. So all this gaslighting that they've been doing, we're just watching them because it's it's the same thing as they are telling us that the election was won by ten thousand. When we know that we lost, they took out almost 50,000 votes in Alimo Show and 20,000 votes in Keja. There's a lot of gaslighting, politics, and tokenism that is a hallmark of the APC government. Interest. All right. Um, welcome back, everybody. I just um, I wanted to, um, at least for those who do not know, I know that most people don't know um, the candidate we're talking about. And um, we have to round up. Unfortunately, we can't get everybody who is here now uh, because I know that some of the guests, they have to go. So um, I will just let Ifi and Ismaili, two of you, to ask questions. Uh, I'm sorry, Uzo, I can't get everybody. We'll, then we just round up. We can have conversations after they, let, they leave the guests. Go ahead, Ifi. Ismaili, go ahead. Go ahead. I will speak after you. Oh. Why me? Why do I have to go before you, Princess? <laughs> to respect the other that I pissed you off, so I have to apologize. No, you didn't. No, no, no. One love. Like two minutes right now, Rudolph. I'll wait for you, my dear. You didn't piss me off. 
It takes a lot to piss me off. I'm so passionate. So I wait for you, darling. Please. Thank okay. Good evening, um, Dr. Franklin Shifremi, and uh, Dr. Aya. I think he he's like he has gone or so. Okay. I'm so disappointed that we are sitting down here after 63 years of independence, still talking about tribe and who is going to be a governor and all that nonsense. That is so disappointing. This is not what we should be talking about. Who owns Lagos and who doesn't own Lagos? That is so sad. I thought we have moved past all this. We are talking about how we can develop Nigeria and move forward. 63 years, we can't even hold election. Free and fair election, 63 years. 63 years, can somebody tell me what we have achieved as a country in 63 years? In 63 years, we don't even have education in that country. In 63 years, we don't even have light. In 63 years, we don't even have good roads. In 63 years, we don't even have no security. In a country of over 200 and something million, and we are sitting down here talking about who is Igbo, who is Yoruba, whose father and mother is this. I partly agree with what Shif Remy said, and this is the topic we've been talking about since after election, if you remember Papu Delta. I have always been a fan of disintegration because this is not, this one Nigeria is not working for us. We've talked about moving down to regional government. Let's try something else because if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're still getting the same results. I said it over and over again on this channel that maybe five years or six years from now, we're going to celebrate Buhari for doing nothing. And we have so much hate among us. I have never seen this hate before in my life. I am just sitting down here listening. What is coming out of our mouth? I agree. We can never be united, no matter how much we try to patch ourselves. It is not possible. Let us be honest with ourselves. It's not going to work. My cousin is married to a Yoruba. My best friends are Yoruba. I've said it on this channel. I am a typical Newe girl. Our tenants are Yorubas. We don't discriminate against them. What is wrong with us? 63 years. I'm afraid to go home. I can't even visit my neighbor because there is no security. 63 years. Can somebody tell me what we have achieved? Can I tell you? Tell me, tell me, is, Mr. Frank. Is, is that the question? Because uh, yes. I, I really need to go. I really to, need to be at another appointment. Yeah, I'm go waiting ahead. for the two ladies to, make the, uh, to ask, ask their questions. So if you guys could save me a little bit, please. I'll be very glad. All right. It's me. It's me. Your, your question. Yeah. So that he will go. Okay. Um, I'm using my phone and my eyes are going gradually because of age, as you guys can see. I'm trying to um, stare at the screen to call out your names respectively. I believe in respect, so please don't feel disrespect if I don't uh, mention your name. I do respect you, obviously. Um, I can see vividly that it's only Mr. Franklin that is present. Yeah. The other two gentlemen had left because maybe they think women don't matter. If you're listening, please... We matter. Come back and uh, take questions, please. Like you have given the other men chances. We have voices. This is disrespectful as well. This is marginalization in another way, okay? Thank you. So my question is, I wrote it down. <sighs> you see the way I'm breathing? I'm, I'm highly, I'm heartbroken. I, I'm trying to, you know, bring myself together in front of my foreign friends to proudly pride myself as a Nigerian because we have been described as intelligent people. But in, in this public domain, the way we are behaving sometimes, especially today, is proven otherwise and, and I'm, I'm highly ashamed that we are giving relevances to things that we call precious, but to other tribes, maybe it's not precious, we are not embracing one another. We thrive in divisions. So my question is, is it possible to go to the school of life and academics to get educated and graduate as an illiterate? 
All right. Thank you. Uh, Franklin. Okay. Uh, first of all, I will take Ivy's question. Uh, your question is, uh, what have we achieved uh, after 63 years? 63 years for a lot of us is a generation. The generation is gone. Um, but in the life of a nation, it's not a long time. The Americans fought even a civil war, 270-something years, for the civil war. When did America start becoming the giant that it is today? It's after the Second World War. It's not even up to 70 years ago. Okay, it took time. Countries evolve. Societies have these teething problems. They are parts of who we are as human individuals. So it's to be expected. If you look at Europe, Europe has thousands of years of history. There was a, a, a 30 year war in Germany when the country was reduced from 18 million to 4 million people. For 30 years, they were killing each other. Europe was never peaceful until 1945. From its history, it was war all every other year. So these teething problems that we see in Nigeria, anybody who has studied societies will see them, they are there. But what the benefits that we get today is the fact that we don't need to repeat the mistakes that others made. You know, we can learn from them and make our own societies better. Like I will always point that leadership as our major problem because leadership directs the way a society moves. That's why leadership is very important. Leadership is not even uh, with uh, the scepter, iron scepter. Moral leadership. Does a lot. You see the way people are following Obi today. You see some people online tell you that I wanted to jump the queue. I couldn't because what will my principal do if he is in this case? That's what moral leadership does. You saw how many people this guy mobilized into the electoral system. People want to follow him. Leadership is... One guy was at what is leader. He says, when Barack Obama walks into a room, everybody there has the urge to stand up and follow this guy. The charism that he embodies, the moral authority, that changes the society to, to a very great extent. Because if you study Freud, you will come to see, we look up to our parents, authority figures. They influence the way we, uh, our lives evolve. And then we can never discount that. So we have to be patient with ourselves. I don't think and I don't believe that there is nothing wrong. There's anything wrong with the Nigerian character. I don't believe that there's a problem between the Hausa Yoruba or the Igbos. I told my IPOB brothers that they should go to hell with that argument that the Fulani is our problem. No, hell no. The Fulani are not our problems. The problem is that we have a functional, a dysfunctional leadership that when somebody commits a crime, his face is looked at before judgment is passed on him. If we are able to get that right, Every society went through all the teething problems that we are going through today. Who will arrive there? But it will take time. Our generation may not live to see it, but we should learn from the Chinese who learn to plant trees that they may never leave to harvest. So we have to make development plans, long-term development plans. What, where do we want to see Nigeria in 50 years, in 100 years? The Germans, after the Second World War, started rebuilding their economy. They called it a 50-year project. And in that 50 years, what happened? Germany became the economic power of Europe. They planned. It's a conscious plan. It's not, it doesn't, development doesn't come by accident. There are a lot of mistakes made along the way that will be made along the way in our own case. But we really have to be patient with ourselves. Saying, oh, we, can, we have to break up because we cannot live together. <laughs> we have not tried a lot of things. We have not even tried actually to live together. We are still entertaining our fears, fanning the embers of those fears. And our politicians are smart. They will come and use those fears to tear us apart. At the end of the day, they will go and attend each other's weddings together, partying in the same clubs. But we are here fighting and killing each other for nothing. That is That doesn't make any sense. We can get Nigeria right. I believe that we can get Nigeria right. People say, well, Some people will tell me, some of my white friends tell me that Nigeria is too big. You have a lot of people. You guys should stop having kids. And I'll ask them, what about China that has 1.3 billion people? Our population is a huge resource that we could use for our development. Our diversity is a great strength that we can use for our development. So that's why I am impatient with anybody who is too petty to be peddling tribalism, be he IPOB person or be he a greater European nation or be he an Arawa person. I am too impatient with such people. Our problem, when you, that uh, I would dovetail into your question, our problem is not that we train uh, that. Uh, uh, let me, how did I write it down? 
Our problem is not hate. Uh, sorry, if you said so much hate. Our problem is not hate. Our problem is ignorance. Because if we know, he who knows will always lead he who doesn't know. So if we come to the realization that we are all human beings, that we are all equal, and that's what the law should do. We should all be equal before the law. And Our mindsets. Get, and we should get, and once we get to that point, development will just happen. Development is at the end of a process. I wrote an article titled, It is Philosophy Stupid. It's on my Facebook wall. I wrote it about four or five years ago. I was coming in from Vienna. I was at the train station. The train station was so perfect, so functional. That was built for human beings. And then I remembered Motala Mohammed Epot in Ikeja, where whenever I get there, I feel like crying. And then I was thinking, why is it functioning? A train station is more beautiful, more functional than our international airport. Why is that the case? It's not because of the people. It's the way, um, it's philosophy. The philosophy of governance that we have evolved over time in Nigeria. And this is where education is pretty important. How do we educate people? What's the curriculum of our education? It's still colonial. And that's why our leaders treat us like colonial subjects. Everything our leaders are doing today are what the colonial masters did to our fathers. So we have new colon... Uh, Franz Fanon called them white, uh, black masks in one... You know, white faces, black masks. Our leaders have colonial mentality and they treat us as such. And then we fight each other like they use... Uh, they played us against each other. So these are the things that we have to start thinking for ourselves. So that's why when somebody tells me, stop philosophizing and stop quoting books, I will tell the person that that's damn ignorant. That person should go and educate himself and read. Reading opens your eyes to reality. You can cross universes by reading alone. I, I do read, actually, just to correct that. I do read I probably am. as much as you do. Dr. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so, sorry, can I just say one last thing before? You didn't uh, answer my question, doctor. Oh, no, 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 no. Everybody, 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 thank you. Thank you so much. And my question we have to we have to let him some other time. Point. It's been five hours of sitting. There are no break. We didn't take any break. So, Dr. Franklin, thank you so much for joining let us. Let me greet uh, Dr. Franklin. Yeah, he can see you. I, I don't think I've had any opportunity to. Uh, uh, Discuss yeah, with you, hopefully sometime in the future. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much, uh, Dr. Franklin, and we thank uh, Ayo Ayo Totten for being here, and also Chief um, Remy uh, Oyemi for being here. Uh, when we come back, we take just a few break, and uh, when we come back, we dissect what happened today. And Franklin, thank you so much for being here. So let's let's take. Thank a you break. guys. Yeah. Thank you. Ciao. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We take a break, then we we'll come back. And then we dissect what happened. And of course, I know, um, as we always do, you guys uh, have uh, a lot of a lot of things to to say about about um, what happened. So while I'm looking for my uh, my friend, uh, my Jake. Um, oh, all right, yeah. So we we'll take a break, and we'll be right back. You, you and this magic Pache. Play something else. He's the only one that is not copyrighted. His network television debut. Not this copyright. is his most uh, recent album right here. It's called Spirit of Love. We're very pleased to welcome Majek Pashek. <laughs>
Right, all right. Thank you so much for hanging in here, everybody. And uh, I know, I know a lot of people wanted to get involved in the conversation. I, I still had the floor when you stopped me. No, you didn't. You didn't go with the floor. I, I did. Um, I was engaging with uh, the chappy, and then you stopped me in midstream. Yeah, because you had enough time. Um, so what I will do now is I will hand, I will hand it for everything else. So, Dominic and and show, please can you anchor anchor this? I'll come back later and um, all right. yeah, and get get people who are who have not said anything to say something. I'll be yeah, back. Yeah, That's I, like me. I didn't finish my question before Dr. Franklin interrupted me. Okay, Dr. Okay. Franklin okay. left though. He left. <laughs> Franklin, <laughs> please. I can. I can. It's fine. It's fine. Show you want to anchor. It's my turn, though. Um, no, Dominic, please um, anchor, because I'm just using my phone. Um, when I go upstairs at some point, I would probably use my laptop, then I can support you. But for now, you carry on. If he asked a question, it's me asked a question. I joined okay. afterwards. So I haven't asked any question, but the panelists have left. So I'll make a few comments. Then you show, then Odogu has to talk, and then I'm guessing CM, were you here before, or you just came in? I want Listen, I'm I'm just, I've been here since. I've been here since. I've been here before uh, so the Dominic came. I've been here. And Uzo hasn't just talked. jumped oh. in. All right, Uzo, okay, so, okay. Okay, let, okay, let me yes, speak yeah, now. Yeah, so, yeah. I thought Uzo, you yeah, called yeah, me. He said, CM. Yeah. I thought I'm you called me. It's just an analogy. I'm that you are here. I'm, because I'm, 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 I'm still fresh. I'm still fresh. I'm still fresh. So, I'm still fresh. I am still fresh. I am still fresh. Okay, yeah, yeah, before, sure, <laughs> before, sorry, my okay, oh, okay, he's, okay, um, he's please. done that called me. Okay, I, I hope, I hope, uh, both uh, the three IO or Franklin and the chief will be listening to the um, to this, you know. I, I was in about, I was listening when they are talking, man, I was like, is there in Nigeria we are looking for? Where is he they speak from the beginning of the show? Man, you are going to. I, 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 if I'm a virus, I'll put virus on this computer. When they, when, when they start speaking from the beginning of the show, I was listening to three of them. I was like trying to, like, now nah, one slap, I'm going to dash all of them one, one, take, take, take it home because they can't come on the, um, the they can't come on the national, uh, I'll call this national TV. That's this is the best national TV that we have now. <laughs> and begin to like, um, international to TV. International TV. I do the next talk something that makes no sense. That you know, how can you say something cannot even say to your son or daughters had to live their life, but then you you come here to say it. I was so embarrassed when I heard them saying what they're saying. You know, people grow annoyed, like if what the what the comment station, man, they be like, what's going on here? You know, 
But I was surprisingly, before the middle of the show, they begin to start laughing. I said, who are you, who are you guys even deceiving? You know? You, uh, as well as I'm from the chief side, my own from the chief side. They say chiefs are the, he say he's a chief. Yeah, um, I respect him. But the chiefs are the mouthpiece of the gods, you know? They speak truth, not only of the truth. But everything he's saying is just like dissenting a, a, a boy in the street would be saying about Igbo does that. It is this that is. Doesn't matter. We're trying to learn from them that they are all of them. They are, they are all uh, um, elders. They have some like me, uh, some of us. But when they speak, they speak like some people that um, that are even like I don't know where they're coming from. I don't know the end they are coming from. If there's a, a, they exist or what's going on in this world, you know, they don't know what's going on in this world. I'm Dr. Fra uh, Franklin. Try to like another one is like uh, he tried to like. You try to modelize the whole topic, the whole thing to make him see peace. But the way they are firing, like man, um, uh, one man, one man came on board. See, how we have seen his own people that fired where he fired. He want to, um, he want to um, go the same way they are going. But um, on my own side, if this the Nigeria are looking for, I don't think there's any Nigeria. Uh, there's any Nigeria at all. I don't think there's Nigeria. At all. And sure came on board, trying to direct them. No, show was boiling. Where it come the first time? Show threw some. Some bullets now, like the bullets, you know, like they, they're just wearing proof. They don't want to even listen to what somebody is, is saying. They are there, dragons that, that's something that doesn't make sense, you know. For me, some of them that are so, uh, um, I don't know, uh, educated literate, that's what I call them. They may have whatever they have, maybe they are daughter or whatever they, they, they okay, 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 they are. Is that where they give their uh, patient a you know, pew, or is, it, is that where they judge their case in the court? I don't understand. You know, for my own end here, I would say, man, if this is one Nigeria we are looking for, I don't think this Nigeria, double Nigeria is possible because if we can live in peace in Lagos, marry each other, they will come online, we we'll deceive, we'll deceive, we'll deceive ourselves. We're not deceiving ourselves since we are deceiving people. That's what they're just doing here. Come here to see yourself. You know, um, I'm angry with the chief. I wanted to tell him, be a chief, be an elder. If you could down, huh? not when you have an insult from somebody, you, you give that to him. What is the, what is the, what is the, um, my problem is that what is the um, difference between you and that person insulting the other person? Somebody insulted, you are insulting back. So all of you are all dissenting. I used to tell my friend, that when I went to uh, Ashawo house, call the person Ashawo, what, what do you want there to do? Are you not Ashawo yourself? So somebody that's insulting somebody, all right, if somebody is insulting, you should be to cool down and teach him why he should change from his uh, old ways. You fire the person back with the same insult. You know, I and the I was here looking at the comment session, attacking 99 percent of comment session are, are, are Igbos as as well. I said, look at this man. Anybody here? I look at the name. They're not Igbos. You know, that was the only thing I saw there. They are like they should go and learn. You know, learning is not only where you come and speak too much English. I see if English 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 people on the table. So just my own. You know, we should, we should we try to get it right. What we are saying it doesn't make sense here. Yeah, we just come here that you know they just come here to just. Whatever they want, right. you know. Thank you very Welcome. much. Let's move on to show. Ah, Odogule. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just trying to unmute myself. So um I'm just gonna go back to the actual topic because that's what I was gonna touch on earlier, but because I was trying to respect um Rudolph's, you know, um laws or rules to say just ask one question if i mean after i asked the first question and after i saw how people were going about their question i just thought maybe i should have just you know shared my thoughts then because it seemed like no one <laughs> really stuck to the to the um plan so the plan i mean the, the topic is mostly about um radical roots vival of the labor party and the evil candidacy and you know would lagos be new york or kigali like someone rightly said lagos you know is I mean, not like New York, but you can. It's like the New York of Nigeria, if you want to put it that, because everybody from everywhere comes to Lagos to do business. My only issue, and I've I've had a lot of people say, you know, um, on this show that I come to look for the likes or something accolades of the evils. I said, how does does it translate to money? I'm not even one of those people that say, by the way, I went to uh, my best friend is evil. I, I don't have one evil friend. I have four friends. Four. I know a lot of people, a lot of acquaintances. I have four friends. I've not made a new friend in the last 25, 30 years. I don't like friends. I don't carry people. I have four friends, four. They're all Yoruba boys. I went to school with a lot of Igbo boys. I still see them from time to time. I talk to them. But 
so when people say you're looking for likes, I'm not looking for anything. I just try to be objective. Because in the case of this Lagos thing, it's for me, if I was to, you know, comment on it, you can't eat your cake and have it. They say that the Igbos are braggadocious in Lagos because they bought land and bought houses. Maybe you should stop selling your houses and land to them. Hold on to them. Your parents went through a lot to build those houses, to own those lands. You hold on to them and stop selling them for a quick buck to go and do whatever with. If you're selling them to invest, it's a different thing. But if you're selling them and you're not... See, the house I live in, I own it. Before I got married, when I was renting, two-bed house, two-bed flat, whatever, I had people who live with me in the UK, boys who came from Nigeria to study and people, you know, between issues, they live with me. They had issues. That's why they were living with me. They couldn't even afford to pay a penny towards the housekeep. So they couldn't dictate to me how I run my house. The minute you start selling half, a quarter, and you start sharing the bills, then they tell you, I can come in whatever. I can go out whenever. I can have a party when I like. Maybe if there's a place where we, they hold the elders forum of the Yoruba people in Lagos, maybe someone needs to tell them to instruct these young men and women to stop selling their parents' properties. And maybe some of these issues will reduce. When you say people are braggadocious, so, I, I, because I'm trying to get to the bottom of it if possible. So you're saying the Igbos come to Lagos to do business and make money. So you people that they are doing the braggadocious for, are you not doing business and making money? So if we're both making money and we're both okay, how can you be braggadocious to me? Except you're not making money yourself. Except you're not making money. So Igbos are loud, okay, who cares? To me now, one Igbo person can't tell me he's loud. E money is like a billion times richer than I am. But it can't be loud to me because it doesn't bother me. I can afford everything I need with my hard work. So your braggadocious does not bother me in the slightest. You can make noise. You can, except it's become nuisance. Then I can report you to the authority to say, my neighbor next door is always doing party. But that you are driving a car, you can drive a Ferrari and a Bentley. I drive my BMW or my Mercedes. It's not as expensive as yours, but it takes them to where I'm going. So all this inferiority complex needs to be addressed as well. We can't just shift the blame and say evils are loud. They are obnoxious. They are braggadocious. Go and walk. When you're busy, you see less of somebody who is braggadocious. The people who are working hard in Lagos, the Yoruba boys in Lagos who are working hard, they don't have these complaints. You hardly find them complain about this braggadocious nonsense. It's All the right. people who don't want to work, just want freeloaders. They are freeloaders, most of them. Thank and you. you see, I come here and I say some people are educated at Beirut. Don't let their certificate <laughs> or their fake English accent bamboozle you. I live in England. We don't speak like that. Thank we you. do not speak. The queen that died, the <laughs> children, the <laughs> king's English, they don't speak that nonsense. Everybody the accent. Nobody speaks like that in the UK. Um, Nobody. I find this funny, like, sorry, is this on a bad slash or your accent, you know, after some English breakfast? What accent are you speaking? To bamboozle who? To, I, God bless Professor Frank, uh, Franklin. He put, he put that guy in his place. Okay, thank you, man. Come and just spew nonsense. So, sorry, quickly to speak about Badibo revival. I have to give a shout out to one of. Sorry, sorry, just to speak on Badibo. Badibo is a Lagosian. They were able to produce his heritage, to show his heritage, his lineage, up to 100 years. Tinubu is not from Lagos, and that's not a crime. It's from Oshun State. Ambode, his father is from Undo State, his mother is from Epe. So Ambode is from Mundo State. The current governor is from my state. He's from Ogun State. His deputy is from Ogun State. Speakers of Assembly, State of Assembly in Lagos is from Ogun State. Obasa, these are all Ogun State people. But the only time now, apart from Fashola, that you have a Lagosian, not that it should matter, but if you start it, be ready to finish it. Now that a genuine blue blood, if there's anything like that, Lagosian wants to be governor, you have an issue. When uh, my brother, uh, Mr. I can't remember his name, um, Ayo, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the lawyer, when he said, oh, uh, there's an article, I like the way someone questioned it. Did he put it out? Was it put out on his behalf? Even if he put it out, you know what? I won't fault him because the boy knows that he is a Yoruba man. You can't take that away from him. His father's name is Olawali. He doesn't get more Yoruba than that. So he knows that my Yoruba base is secure. 
Now, I know there are a lot of Igbo people in Lagos. So I would show them and tell them that, oh, I'm one of you. I need your vote. It's election season. The boy is campaigning. You put your best foot forward. What is wrong with him saying, I'm also Igbo, by the way, just in case you didn't know. And I keep asking these people, when Tinubu's grandchildren, Sheyi's children, when they get old and they want to contest as governor for Lagos, these same people will be gray and old. They will still be campaigning for Tinubu's grandchildren. But guess what? Tinubu's grandchildren, through Sheyi, their mother is part Lebanese, part Igbo. So if Tinubu's grandchildren are Yoruba, Lebanese, Igbo. Even Sheyi, his mother is from Ishekri. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. She, she, she is not um, um, Remy's son. In Remy's children. I don't know yes, if she's I know, I know, but I'm saying yeah. she is okay. she's children. She is, she is away. She is away much. She is no, away much. That is the no. difference. She is, so, so, so she what is, is the is, first, first, first what away match. What do we know? No, I'm not? saying no, so. She is children. Not. When they get old, they will contest for governorship in Lagos. They might, but nobody would say they don't speak Yoruba. And their mother is half Lebanese, half Igbo. These same people campaigning for Tinubu, Tinubu's grandchildren will rule their grandchildren. It's, 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 it's a fact of life. They won't have an issue with it. What's wrong with Badebo? They said, what experience does he have? What was uh, this current one doing before he became governor? And uh, Ifi, just one thing to you. You said, what have we achieved? Please, every day you wake up, pray for Peter Obi. Pray for the obedience and appreciate us. <laughs> Have no, you seen the governor of Lagos? No, no, no. Governor of Lagos is not going to the shopping mall and licking ice cream with the people. No, they will kill me here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Governor of Lagos is going to the shopping mall, licking ice cream with people, acting like he's a human being. But for the last four years, you couldn't touch them. They were so distant from people. See the one, the movie actor, the um, what's his name, uh, Desmond Elliott. He's not giving them transformer. Okay, All of a sudden, yeah, they are working, and this is what opposition should cause. When the opposition is active, the citizens are the benefit, because everything Sonwolu is doing right now, it is Lagosians that are benefiting from it. When we have active opposition, the citizens will benefit. So any opinion that has been voted in on the wave of Peter Obi that does not perform, you can bet that APC has learned what opposition is. They will be on their tails, which means those guys will perform, will benefit. The citizens. And this is what people don't get. We will be the beneficiaries if the system works, if the people we appoint work. But they are so hell-bent on, it must be my person that... I couldn't care less if it's not Peter Obi. Give me a person that will do the job. I just worry that Tinubu is surrounded by sharks. That's my only worry. If he performs, sure, I'll be very happy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sure. Sure. You look, you, look, you look like 10 minutes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No vex, no vex. As a moderator now. Uh -uh. Moderator. <laughs> As moderator. Look at this. Okay, Rudolph. Uh, Uzo has stopped. So right now it's me, CM, Lexi, and the BC left. Well, I think okay, CM has stopped. So let me we talk. See, I think CM was to be CM. Right? No, I have no. I have something important to say. What are you talking? Okay, well, I have something. Dr. Rudolph, it's not fair. These people have Please. gone second round. I only made just one sentence or so. That's not really fair. Uh, even even me, I was I was caught. Rudolph, let you know. know. Actually, I had to say thank you and goodbye to all of you. <laughs> That's a second round of what? That's a second round of what? Rudolph, um, I can't, I can't the show. I, know, I, I thought it's my I don't, turn. I don't, have the, I don't have the requisite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, you know what? Yes. You know what? Um, so, Dominic, if you... Sure, show, show, are you leaving? I can add Dominic now. I can get Dominic back. Me, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. See, I came back from work. I wanted to re talk to Franklin and Chief Remy, but they left, so... I just want to round up, round, round up my thoughts. It won't right. be long. Big. Okay, yeah, yeah. Play big jacket, dog boy. All right. Okay. What I, I have in mind is is that um, the ethnicity kind of card we are playing is not helping us to grow, and most especially, you see people that have gone to the four walls of schools as academics and then the works of lives their mindsets are so a cake and then they speak diction uh, 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 um, they speak vocabularies they even create vocabularies of their own to use it to intimidate others and when they use these vocabularies when you check it has no meaning they want to sound even more Oyibo than they are when we are supposed to be true nigerians how can we say we are through Nigerians when we display this sort of disgraceful attitude publicly? You should, 
there shouldn't be any bitterness when when you can you can compete positively i can see okay from the panelists what did i learn today some arguments were constructive whilst another part of the argument is kind of attacking and destructive like competing who is going to um, I don't know what it is, but there is this kind of negative energy when some ethnicities come together, they lose their sense of uh, communication and they start vomiting kind of uh, nonsensical words. This competition is quite, uh, it was clear between the panelists, ended up turning it, the session into arguments and that's not why they were here, trying to um, when you see pink, you call it purple. When you see something bad, you try to defend it. Badebo is a full Yoruba man. And when I, when I, I first heard about uh, his name from one platform being described as uh, or Chinedu um, Rhodes Vivo. And I'm like, how can an Igbo man go all the way to Lagos and want him to be uh, the governor of Lagos State? And then when I went to make research on his um, campaign slide, I saw his full names, just like the way you will fill out your full names when you're filling forms. There is no shame in you laying out all your names so that people will know who you are. You cannot deny your originality and your identity just to become a governor. What's, that is who you are. You can't hide it. So from that day, I, I kind of, um, my, my respect for certain people, specifically someone like one man who comes to, to divide and I can't even stand to listen to his platform anymore. I used to go there a lot before, but the way I was bullied and attacked, I stopped going there. And it turned out to become a tribal platform, a Yoruba platform that when you are from another ethnicity, you go there, you're a bit welcomed. Maybe, okay, they want some uh, voices from a different ethnicities, but as soon as they start, you are going to be like one person in the midst of sharks, and then you'll be swallowed. I was forced to stand my ground. I was forced to raise my voice the way I shouldn't. And then in the end, you'll be tagged as aggressive. Oh, here we go. The yam heads, the evils, the name calling. We should stop all this. We should stop it because it's not beneficial. It's not feeding me. It's not feeding you to be the way we are attacking each other. It's nonsensical. It, it's, it's not worth it to come online and fight. If it's not going to be productive, there's no point coming online. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. We appreciate so, you. Um, it's me now, man. You go. Oh, well, yeah. oh, it's, come on, come I'm on. Next, man. It's me. Ah. Uh, don't okay, go, don't go, go ahead. Go ahead, CM. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so on, on this, on this <laughs> bad boy issue, yeah. let me, there's something I want to educate the panel on. They said the uh, APC in Lagos made two cardinal mistakes. Number one, they thought that making everybody to believe the election is a fight between the Yoruba and the Igbo. Number two, believing that anybody that is not Yoruba in Lagos must be Igbo. They did not understand the basic sets of people who are against them. This include their worries and the Yorubas who are indigenous Lagosians, Danford drivers and conductors, car owners in Lagos who car owners in Lagos, irrespective of where they come from, especially those that have been scammed by LASMA and VIO, graduates who are working as Uber driver, KK driver, Danfo and, Danfo and conductors in Lagos, anybody who has ever lived in the Western world before coming back to live in Lagos, Awaris and Lagos, Lagos indigenous who are doing Agbero work, graduates who are doing Agbero work, some members of other tribes who live and do businesses in Lagos, people who do business in a market and have allocated spaces outside the sun that they are forced to pay daily instead of shops, people who do business in the market with their own shop, this is where 90% of you boys belong, people who have shops on the street that local government will lock and charge them 25,000 or more once they open their shop every day. Okada riders, up to 70% of them are Northerners and Muslims. 
people who were shot at the Loki toll gate on 20th October 2020. People who lost family members at the Loki toll gate. People who have brought properties in Lagos for donkey years and paid for everything requested from them without getting C of O. So in other words, somebody, these are the people that voted against uh, Tinubu. It is not in the Igbo. Igbo votes alone cannot defeat APC in Lagos. It is a, a sort of a cocktail of all the votes of other people who are either doing Agbero work, Tinubu is charging them, either Tinubu is using them to do a tout or so many things. So it was just a case of the entire people of Lagos against Tinubu. It's not Igbo vote. So it's even more Yorubas voted against Tinubu on 25th than in Igbo. So people should not take it out on Gbadebo. And these are the same people that will vote for Gbadebo on the 18th. So in all these things we are saying, it, it, is not, it is not right for people to just feel that Igbos are, want to take over Lagos. Igbos are not interested in taking over Lagos. Rather, what in Igbo want? If the seaport in Port Harcourt and Calabar is working, I bet you 80% of Igbos in Lagos will go back to the east because there is, there is no sense in a ship coming from China that we pass the South African coast, come up to Cameroon, pass Calabar, pass Port Harcourt, pass Warre, then go to Lagos. Then you now look for trailer to transport it again back to Aba, which is near to Port Harcourt. So these, these are the reason. That is what is holding. And again, if the airport at Enugu is made international, or the one at Yorka, which will be not built with all the standard wrong way, if they give the APs license, to fly from London to Oka or Oka to Johannesburg. After all, he went from Abuja to Johannesburg to rescue Nigerians. Six hours flight. Why can't he fly from Oka to Johannesburg? If he's doing all this, Lagos will decongest. So Igbos are not interested in taking over Lagos. It's even, it's even, it's even we call it, we, we take it like the way the white man see Africa as their white man's grave. We don't so much cherish coming to live in Lagos. We want to stay in our land, but we need, when we say seaport, the seaport at Amapa and Tinkan was built by federal government money. If federal government can use that same money and help the East, that's okay. That's what we are asking for fairness. We are not asking for anything. We know that Tinubu is building another seaport in Lekki. That is Lagos own, but let us get out of our federal allocation the way they used Lego, uh, federal money to build Mutala Airport. Let them use federal money to develop Enugu Airport exactly as Mutala Airport. Everything we end is as simple as that. Overnight, people will leave New York and land in Enugu the way you leave Atlanta and land in Lagos. As simple as that. This thing we end. So I don't want, when we want to do this, they will, people will think that Igbos are so much interested in coming to live in Lagos and start to squad. No, we don't need it. We don't. As a person, I can I study that. I did. I did my undergraduate at Idi Araba, the medical school there. But I cannot. If I go back to Lagos, go back to Nigeria, I'm going to Ezinifi, Agwatan, Agwatan, Anambra State. That is where I'm rushing to, because I can't. So I can't. We are suffocating Lagos. I don't like it. We have a family house in Lagos. We put it off for sale for a year now. Nobody is bringing close to the asking price. What do I want to sell and go back? That's what we are saying. So people should take it easy. We are not interested. The, the modern Igbo of my generation that have been abroad, we don't want to go back to Lagos. We left Lagos to abroad. We want to go back to the East and start a, a Western view of life. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, CM. Uh, Dominic. Okay. CM, have you finished? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's the CM, it's the CM internet that is giving him problems. <laughs> so let me not go there. <laughs> uh, a lot of points. Okay, in no, uh, I finished. <laughs> Good. Okay. Last year, we are in the network. Don't go do because before your network, it is do Nigeria style for us. But I thank Okeja and Okeja. Okeja and Okeja work. So you get the talking to. But I Okeja and Okeja. Um, I'll try to keep it simple, but it's going to be a little bit difficult. Rudolph, feel free to cut me off because. I feel I may go for it. Every, every once in a while, like, you know, people start all this ethnic uh, uh, um, which, which can be a little bit uh, unnerving because you, when you see through the, the fallacies in, in people's arguments, it just drives you crazy. First of all, the, 
the the first person that came to my mind is if there's a yoga man, let's say indigenous Lagos man, let's say he's let's try to make it very granular. A man who's a worry, he can trace his generation in Lagos for 10, 15 generations, however many years that is, right? And his mother is Yoruba, father is Yoruba, but for some reason, because he's in a cosmopolitan uh, city in Nigeria, he doesn't to speak Yoruba. Would anyone still uh, bring up that argument of whether he's authentically Lagosian or authentically Yoruba? That is the first question I want to That's the first question that came to my mind when Franklin and uh, Chief Remy and the rest were talking. Were talking. And then show me the good point of Tinubu is not even from Lagos. And yet that was not, that wasn't challenged. So, you know, when people make these arguments, I've always like, you know, when you go back in time, go through history, go through the precedents that have been set in the last couple of years, you see that some of these arguments people make is just based on pure ethnic bigotry. And people don't realize it. It is natural. Everyone always wants to go back to what makes them who they are, right? The Igbo man wants to talk about um, his Igbo-ness. The Yoruba man wants to talk about his yoruba -ness. No one thinks about what is good for the public. This is very simple. If somebody does not want to vote Viva because he doesn't think Viva should be the governor of, a, of a Lagos, that's simple. So at all this argument of whether he's Yoruba or Igbo is, is a mute point. Let the Yoruba man or Igbo man, go and vote. Let people vote genuinely based on what they want. Don't come on social media or go in the news and be peddling hatred and hatred and ethnic bigotry. Let the people of Lagos decide who they want. It's very simple. The one thing that is unique about Lagos, which many people tend to relegate, is Lagos is a cosmopolitan city. It was the capital of Nigeria. And so by its nature and by its history, you end up having a cosmopolitan politics. It is very simple. That's why you end up seeing someone like Vivo. That's why you end up seeing people who are by uh, whose father and mother are Igbo, but they're able to run for things in Lagos. So it's only natural. So trying to compare Lagos and other places that have always been indigenously hom homogeneous is like comparing apples and oranges. You can compare Lagos to Anambra State. You can compare um, Lagos to Kaduna State. You can compare Lagos to Borno State because. Besides the colonial era, those places have always been homogeneous with whatever ethnic group that is there. And so naturally, if a Yoruba man goes to Anambra state, the Anambra man will not vote for the Yoruba man, not because the Yoruba man is Yoruba, but because they are used to voting for people like themselves. They've always been almost homogeneously Igbo the entire time. But if you go to Lagos, it would not, it would not work there because most people have been mixed. There are many tribes there. So the culture there over many, many years, whether a Yoruba man in Lagos likes it or not, you can't compare it. For years, hundreds of years, at least 100 plus years, let's keep it that way. For 100 plus years, it has always been a cosmopolitan city. People have, have always voted not based on ethnicity, but based on competence. And so trying to remove that in this moment, because Lagos is no longer the capital. The way I see it, uh, let me try to keep it short. The way I see it now is, because Lagos has been cosmopolitan for a very long time and his politics is, is heterogeneous and cosmopolitan, now that he's no longer a capital and it is more of a state, you start to see this Yoruba nationality, nationality trying to pull back Lagos to be back to where it was, which is a Yoruba um, a, a, a enclave. But nobody is talking about whether we, we need to go back and rem and maybe all the resources that were used to develop it. Nobody wants to talk about whether Nigeria, whether other, other states should benefit this, this, to get the same kind of benefit that Lagos State got. And so I always, it always, it always a headache for me when people try to compare Lagos and other places. You can never, it doesn't make sense, you can never compare Lagos and other states. It can never happen just based on Lagos history. If you want to vote Vivo, vote, vote for Vivo. I don't even know who he is. If you want to vote for somebody else, vote for somebody else. I, I want to you all know, this comparison that doesn't make sense. Can I ask one question? Bigotry will not take us anywhere. Can I ask a question? Sorry, I was, rambling, I was rambling a little bit. No, 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 you are right. But question, okay. Dr. Rudolph okay. Okay. and Dr. Dominic, question. Is okay. there anywhere in the constitution of Nigeria that said that for you to become a president of Nigeria, you must be speaking all the languages? There's no way in the constitution that says that. There's one man constitution. Only one man There's no constitution. Even, I don't Only think in the constitution. Pardon me, Rudolph. I don't think I even has an official, has, has an official local language. It has English as the official language of Nigeria, even though some of Nigerians some, some don't speak English. 
right? Somebody made a point of Lagos uh, bylaw, not because remember Nigerian states don't have constitution; they have bylaws, right? Someone made a, someone made a point of Lagos state has the law that uh, the language of politics is Yoruba, but it never said that to run for election you have to speak Yoruba. Because I'm pretty sure there are Yorubas who, are, who live in Lagos, who are Lagosians, that cannot speak a word of Yoruba. I'm pretty sure. Just like I have Igbo, a question. I cannot speak Igbo. Does that disqualify them from running as governor of Lagos? You know, this is just ethnic bigotry quoted in, uh, in academics. And it's one of those who are educated, who are, who, are, as, who are just spouting such ethnic bigotry. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. All right. Thank you. It's quite sad, man. It's quite sad. Thank you, Dominic. So I, I, I'm at a loss. Where are we? Who is who is next? Uh, should I take it from here? So Adewale, Adewale has not spoken. Ndubisi has not spoken. Ovie has not spoken. And uh, I never uh, speak. But Marito, were you here before? You join. Oh. You join. I saw you. Know, oh. you first come here. You join me. Go to see Ovie. It's my turn now. Not just my turn. Marito, Marito. I have only mentioned people. They're not a chance. Not just my turn. Marito, I want to. Marito, question, question, please, question. Wait. Mama, I love Where's you. Don't 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 my phone. I came before. Um, Only telling you. I have not spoken. I am not jumping the queue. Mama, I, phone, you. I love you too. All right, let's go to the incident. I have a question, okay. please. Okay. But, okay. okay. Yeah, please, let me finish. Assess you. Okay. 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 Please. No, no try I come What's to this question? platform to. I'm here. I'm, I always come to this platform to learn. So I have to ask a question on what something I do not understand. Is it true that Badebo Rosevivo speaks fluent Anambra Igbo? What, and they doesn't speak Yoruba Igbo. They doesn't speak Yoruba at all. No, it's true. I want to know so that I can know. Say he speaks no, fluent no, Anambra no, like no, me. No, See, is that relevant to this conversation? Is that relevant to this conversation? We can always pick that up. <laughs> is it relevant to this conversation? I'm, I'm not, can I'm not I? Talking. Is it relevant to what we are talking about? Oh, it's my turn to speak. Hey, we're talking yeah. about revival now. Is it not revival we're talking about? Okay. Okay. Somebody informed us that yeah. he speaks. See him. Let me. Okay. See him. Let me speak. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and do this. Okay. I greet everyone in the house. Well, I listened to the uh, three. A panelist, I joined at some point. Then the argument was heating up. The two gentlemen from the southwest were saying their own, and uh, the doctor, Doctor Franklin, was equally trying to um, call call a, a true sort of that by saying that we should divide, we should deviate away from uh, from the is issue of um, using some um, ethnic words that may spark uh, trouble and his right do let everybody calm down but there was one one thing I, I kept hearing from mr remy and uh, from chief remy chief remy keeps bringing us uh, bringing us back to history and those history are those kind of uh, narratives that usually uh, um, so seed of discord among us which are which are not really good then there was a time the doctor tried to um, counter him. And like when Dr. Remy said, oh, during the Civil War, they bombed Lagos, and they bombed the Kija. Somebody would not know what really happened during the Civil War. We think that, oh, oh so, so it was really, since it has been long, we've been planning this thing to take over Lagos. And these are very wrong narratives. These are during war time. So I don't know, for me, like I've, I've said it here before, I was born in Lagos. I'm a, I'm a Lagos boy. I can claim to be a, a Lagos boy. Even if those who are born in Lagos come and contest for a position, I'm qualified to go and contest for a position. But we lived very peacefully. My part of the first food I knew how to eat was Amala and Begiri and other kinds of Yoruba food. The same thing with my friends. They come to my place, I go to their place. So we should try to come to play down on this ethnic divide so that. Because all these people who are saying all these things outside are, are mainly people who are largely uh, illiterate and uninformed back home. That is why somebody can rear them up to go and burn shops or attack some other person. And if not for the fact that, um, I don't know how to put it, maybe some people intervened, 
that attack in Akere, that is, I know the place very well, that, that, that was where my area, that's, that's my area as well. I grew up in that area. That place, the attacks, if not, if maybe somebody come then down and order, maybe what they wanted for the, is for people to retaliate and then the, the trouble will start. And this will not take us anywhere. We shouldn't be saying, bringing in ethnic and religious divide um, in, 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 in our discourse in today's Nigeria that, that we want to be like some countries in the West and maybe Japan. It's really not good. And I feel pain when I see some elders across the divide bringing in all those sentiments. They are telling the younger ones that this is how it is. We should continue this way. And it will not lead us anywhere. We should not be doing this to ourselves. Let me stop here for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Indovisi. Um, I will let you next. Good luck. I'm heading out. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. If you need me, just text me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all very much. Huh? All right. Adewala, you're next. Hello, Dr. Damages. Good to see you on again. You came where, when everything was calm. And no, I um, I was driving earlier when I saw the gentlemen uh, that were debating. So I saw the topic. I was just not interested in it. So I switched it off. <laughs> it, wasn't a, it wasn't a, to me, it's just something that is not debatable. Um, I, I think is the um, is the uh, what brought this up is the fear, you know. Hurricane Obi was sweeping the southwest and it landed in Lagos. So, and people are going to bring us sort of, uh, you know, some nonsensical argument that doesn't really have uh, base when it comes to politics. Uh, everybody knows that that guy is a Lagosian. Uh, but, you know, if you want to criticize him, criticize him based on the policy that he put forward, not to say that he's not a legation. And as far as I'm concerned, I was sitting down here listening to everybody talking. Um, Dominic raised one point that, you know, you can't compare Lagos State with every other state. I agree with that. But, you know, Lagos State is like a state that like a, like a basket where you keep putting all sort of fruit in it. Whether we like it or not, whether Yoruba or Aousa or Igbo, everyone that lives in Lagos pay taxes. So if you live in Lagos and you pay your taxes, you pay your deal, you know, sometimes you are more you are also qualified to leave. But, you know, uh, we have this culture that is kind of like limit our growth. Um, I'm glad that we're having the, 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 the discussion at, 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 all together as well, because, you know, in the constitution, Nigeria constitution, as long as you're in Nigeria, you can contest anywhere, any part of the country. But we have a culture, the culture that makes people see other people as not one, you know, not one of them. Uh, it is, to me, is limiting our growth. Honestly, I'm looking forward to the day that we will see a white man contesting for a public office in Nigeria. <laughs> we're all in abroad, right? So if you are abroad, every time we see the name of Nigeria coming up, we don't we don't care whether that person is evil. I was as long as that didn't sound like Nigeria name, we praise and oh, that's Nigeria doing great, you know, making us proud. So how come when it comes to our internal a domestic issue, you know, we're always saying that I don't look like Dr. Damages or Dr. Damages doesn't look like me. Yes, I may have a big head, but nevertheless, we still belong to the same family, right? So it's nonsensical to me, and that's the reason why I didn't turn in to the watch the debate. But, you know, our culture is so... Uh, today, you go to some places that they will warn you not to marry from certain areas, from certain states. Why? Because, you know, we have this this uh, myth, you know, that has been passed down from generation. These people should not associate them with them. And I'm talking to you now. The only person that I see in the studio that kind of sound, his name sound like mine is Show, I guess. Others are not from Yoruba, but I'm turning into an evil man's show, right? So to me, it does not it, what should be talking about. I think it has to it stem from uh, the fear, the fear of uh, Hurricane LUP coming to the southwest. So, <laughs> so and I, 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 sometimes we need to. Education is the key. Um, we, you know, people that actually I'm a I'm a proud Yoruba man. I speak Yoruba very well. 
and I speak the Yoruba language to my kid. But you know, the fear, the fear of losing your culture, your identity is real. And some of these things that people, you know, probably maybe comes from that fear, losing of identity, you know. And to me, the guy is Yoruba, whether he speaks Yoruba or not speaking Yoruba. Now we have kids in Lagos that, you know, we are forcing them to speak, in, I mean, speaking our language. Before we used to say, speak English, although though you don't know how to speak your, you know, English, but now you are forcing your kids to speak your own language. So I think that's what it comes from. But I, I have friends that speak Yoruba more than me, and their names is Uzo, and their names is Chinedu. So what do you call those people? I, to me, it's not a, it's not something I want to do my, uh, you know, put more energy into. I know that. And they were let me ask you. Um, there's something I wanted to get the panelists to com comment on, but I didn't get a chance. And something about Abuja now. So we're mm. talking about Lagos. Lagos was in the past, but 